In this video we're going to have a look at how sequences can be used to calculate percentage increase or decrease over a period of time for some particular amount. So in this case we've got a value of 300 and we're increasing it by 6%. If we wanted to work out the value after one increase it would be a simple case of working out 6% of 300, whatever that may be, and then adding it on to 300. But if we're going to be doing this over a period of time, perhaps it represents a population of a species, maybe it represents money for the value of some particular object, and we want to do it over a long period of time, it might be easier to do some calculation that's repetitive. So what we need to consider first of all is what is 6%? Well, 6% represents 6 out of 100. That's the definition for a percentage. It's an amount over 100. And we can also represent 6 over 100 as 0.06. So going back to our original problem, if we're going to increase 300 by 6%, what we need to do is take the basic amount of 300 and add to it 6% of 300, or writing that as a decimal, 0.06 times 300. After we've done that, we can see from an algebraic point of view that we can factorise the 300 out, and we're left with in brackets 1 plus 0.06. We can then say, well, if that's the case of increasing 6% of the first amount, we could do that for any value. So any term in this sequence can be represented by 1 plus 0.06, all multiplied by the previous value in the sequence. Putting that in sequence notation, what we can say is that the next term in the sequence, or Tn plus 1, is equal to, in brackets, 1 plus 0.06 times Tn with the start number being 300. In other words, we put it as a recursive definition. We can also write 1 plus 0.06 as 1.06. Some people will find it very easy to write down that 1.06 straight away because all it is is 1 plus the percentage increase as a decimal. And that's what we use in our sequence rule for multiplying by the term Tn. Now let's have a look at a practical example which involves a percentage decrease. So in this case here we can see that we've got some key parts of the question. That is the car decreasing by 8% each year. It's originally worth 25000 and we want to find the cost in 10 years time. So as a one-off calculation, in other words just after one year, what we'd do is we'd work out 8% of 25000 and take that away from 25,000. Or if we're going to put that in sequence notation and we want to work out an 8% decrease for any term, we'll say let's multiply the term by 0.08 and we'll subtract that from the original value, which we'll write as 1 times Tn. In other words, just the original value Tn. So already what we've done is we've written this sequence as a recursive definition. Well, almost as a recursive definition. We haven't got a start value. So what we do is we say we started with 25,000, but notice it's written as T0, whereas you'd normally think the first term would be T1. Well, the reason why it's T0 is because in this problem we're dealing with a price or a value over a period of years, and the original amount is at zero years. In other words, no time has passed. If we want to work out the value next year, that means one year has passed. So what we do is we say, well, the start value in this case is T0, and of course it's still $25,000 because that's the original value of the car. Now because we've written 1 minus 8% or 1 minus 0 0.08 multiplied by Tn, we can simplify 1 minus 0 0.08 as 0 0.92. And the way to think about that is to say that if we'd had an 8% drop in the value, effectively 92% remains. So what we can say is 8 percent's gone, 92 percent's still there. So what we're working out in the sequence notation is we're saying the next term in the sequence is 92 percent of what was originally there, in this case Tn. So if we use a calculator to go through and see the sequence over a series of terms and get to T10, in other words 10 years later, we'll find out the value as $10,859.71.